here. You're in here for the session, Images Everything, working up your website. And what I'm going to be aiming to do is just give some practical tips to folks, uh, newcomers and old timers alike, about some things you can do just to sort of visually perk up your website and maybe some pitfalls and things to avoid along the way. My name's Laura Byrne Cristiano, and I started out in life as a teacher, uh, and then I transitioned into a career in uh, content writing, event planning, and marketing. So that's what the experience I have that I'm bringing to this. So let's start out by talking about trends and images. And much like anything in life, what worked five years ago doesn't necessarily work today. Things evolve, trends change. Now you don't want to be on top of things second by second because you don't want to leap into a fad. But there are a lot of things that have changed on websites over the years. Um, I don't know if anybody uh, saw it, but they've kept up the um, Space Jam website. Anybody see the original Space Jam movie? You're a fan of that movie? They have that website that is still up in its 1997 glory and it was cutting edge technology at the time. And we've changed so much since then. So here's one of the big things that's changed over the years. This is very current right now. If you want to have a big impact, you want a hero image. That's really where things are going now on your homepage of your website. Um, and what the hero image, and I'll get into a little bit more as to what that is in a second. That's really replacing what used to be the slider. Everybody had a slider or a carousel on the front page, and that's really kind of gone the way. We're now talking hero images. Um, and if you're wondering why a slider isn't really the best of choices on your home page, um, don't just take it from me. Take it from the folks at Yoast, the uh, SEO plugin. And they're not paying me to say this. I'm not a Yoast employee or anything like that. But there's just some really solid advice here from the folks at Yoast. If your theme forces you to include a slider, also named carousels, on your home page, please realize that it's making you use a feature that has limited to no value for SEO. The feature is probably slowing down your website by putting in extra JavaScript, and speed is very, very important when it comes to SEO. It prevents the user from reading the good stuff, your content. Okay? Really, you know, you want them to get into it. You don't per se want them just looking at at images. Um, and it probably accounts for less conversion. A lot of times people aren't just looking at it. So what are you doing instead? Um, talking about it a little bit more. Um, here are some stats for it. Only 1% of the people actually click on a slide, which is almost always the first slide. That may not exactly be where you want people to go, and that's if they click. Sliders oftentimes have been shown to confuse people because you're sending them multiple offers. They're not really sure what's the right thing. Am I in the right place? Um, not the best of choices. As we said before, they really can slow down your site, which has a uh, negativity when on impacting SEO. There's also a couple other things. Um, and this one's for me. This one isn't from Yoast. Sliders also impact accessibility. People who use screen readers, sliders make them bananas because every time it slides, it loads up your text. And then it loads up your text. Have you ever heard a voiceover on a screen reader? It goes bananas on a slider. It's really, really awful for people having that kind of experience. Here's another one, too. The sizing of photos in a slider is a perpetual nightmare. If you have folks that have different editor roles and what have you on your website, have you ever had somebody put the wrong size photo in the slider and then you're looking at it and you're going, oh, that's not what I wanted there. That looks really bad at that size or that's not sending the right image. It causes so many problems. Um, and then lastly, folks, frankly, just they're not sticking around to see those, those images. True story from uh, my life in marketing uh, a private school system at one point. I literally had one client that had 42 images in their slider. I, I literally sat there with the accounting going one, two, three. Now mind you, it was like five seconds in between each slide too. Um, so the, the person who shared the office next to me came over and she said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm counting how many images are in this carousel. She said, you're kidding. 
So can you imagine what that load time did to the site? Also, folks weren't hanging around to watch 42 images. So you want to get, you want to get around it. And I will say, I, I learned from experience. I was the person who inflicted a bad slider. Here is my bad slider. I'll own up to it. Um, this was a site that I helped to create. I can tell you from experience that the slider was basically doing more good news. What's hot? What's new? What schools are doing something great? Do you know how many people clicked on this information? Less than 1%. Everybody went to go click on our curriculum, um, admission testing, and find a school. Those were our three, our three most popular things. And this item taking up the top realty or above the fold on my website was serving pretty much no effective purpose whatsoever. It wasn't helping us at all. Um, my friends over in the Philly Archdiocese, however, did have a good plan. They have a great hero image right there. And what a hero image is essentially, in layman's terms, is an image that just stretches the top of your website, has a nice big impact, it reflects who you are, your mission. Um, you can put some text over it. There's, could do a little bit better on the accessibility front, it's a little hard to see some of it. But you want that to really represent you much more so than a slider. It just has a bigger impact, um, and hero images are really the way to go. So, let's talk a little bit about what makes a good image. Um, so now we talked about hero images, and this can apply to a hero image, or frankly, it can apply to any image anywhere on, our web, on your website. And it really comes down to emotional image. That's really what makes a good image. We've probably heard this phrase a billion times, a picture is worth a thousand words. A very complex idea can be conveyed in just a single image. You're able to process a lot via an image. It gives you a lot of information. So let's talk about a little bit what makes an image a good image, a quality image when it comes to your website. First thing, and this is super, super important, is optimize the image, okay? Optimize the image for web. There are a variety of programs out there, whether you're using Photoshop, you're using GIMP, there's a lot of free um, items out there on the internet that will help you size down your images for the web. You don't need a super sharp 300 DPI image on the web. I mean, you absolutely need it when you go to print but you don't need it when you go to web. So make sure that you've taken the resolution down, you've saved for web. It'll slow down your site, it'll eat up your storage space. So check that out first. Another thing with using your space appropriately is really fill out your content containers. If you have a content container that is 700 wide, using a 200 wide image isn't the best. Has anybody ever seen little images that are like this big? That's not really helping anybody. If I can't really see what's going on in the image, unless it's like a company logo, that tiny little image isn't helping you. Use it, stretch it, use, make it, make it big enough so you can see it. And the good news now too, um, one of the things I, I like in the Gutenberg editor that's out now, that um, it took me a little bit to figure out how to do it. It lets you very easily size up and keep everything in proportion. So if you have the image and you don't really like, oh, that's too small, it's pretty easy just to size it up. Um, so play with it. Make sure it's filling your content container well. And I think you get a very good representation in the new editor as to how much, you know, what is it going to look like in that content container. Here's another one. I love wrapping text. Left and right aligning is great. It gives me a nice flow, but just watch that we don't have the zigzag effect going on, okay? I love left align, I love right align, but they shouldn't, it shouldn't be like, then I get dizzy. <laughs> um, it also wrecks, it also makes the mobile experience not the most pleasant experience ever, so use it, use it sparingly. Um, give yourself some space in between if you're going to go left and right align. Um, so watch how close those things happen. I really tend to like to fully stretch my photo a lot of the time, but I understand if it's like a, a headshot or something like that, you're going to want to left and right align that photo. Um, 
Here's another one. This is really fun. I can always tell when it's somebody's first day in Photoshop because they are using every bell and whistle that came with the program. Um, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. So use filters sparingly. Um, you know, don't, you know, overly, Instagram is sort of the same way. I've seen people on Instagram use every single filter available. You know, less is more. Pick like one. Um, which is the same thing with the filters and effects. Here's probably my favorite thing is what I call the rule of three. It comes down to individuals and crowds. A lot of times when people are illustrating something on their site, they have an event and they take this big crowd shot. Crowd shots are great, but I can also imagine that if I take a picture of three people, I can imagine that there were 400 doing the same thing. Less is more. Almost all of the time, don't use more than three people in your shot if you're focusing on people, if that's the of your picture, definitely less is more. The reason for that, again, photos, emotional impact is what's important. When I'm talking people, what gives me emotional impact is that I can see their eyes. We've all heard that phrase that the eyes are the windows to the soul. I need to see those eyes. That's really what will draw me in. And if I can't see them in a massive crowd shot, you're kind of missing an opportunity for emotional impact. Another way that I like to think about it is I call it passing the quarter test or passing the thumbnail test. If the person's face isn't as big as my thumbnail or a quarter, it's not a great photo. That's a good way of checking it out because that way I can totally see that facial, that facial expression and I can really get drawn in to whatever the moment happens to be. So let me give you a little bit of an example of this. Here are two photos from the same kind of event at two different locations. So what this event is called is Backpacks for Kids. And what it is is that this organization supplies kids in um, economic areas where they don't maybe have the best of opportunities. When it's time to go back to school, this organization gives kids a brand new backpack and inside that brand new backpack are a whole bunch of school supplies for that child. Now, any of you who have kids know how much money it costs come, you know, late August, September, whenever your school system goes back to outfit your child for school. This is, this is hefty bucks here. And this is a great organization that gives kids the dignity of having a brand new backpack instead of a hand-me-down backpack, and it's all full of brand new supplies. It's awesome. So, now that I've told you about the organization, which is the better picture? Yeah. That little, I mean, you just can't beat that little guy with that smile. He's amazing. I mean, he just draws you in. So if you were, if you were coming into a story about this on a website blind, having no idea what the story was about, and you're skimming, and everybody skims and looks, and you saw that picture, wouldn't you want to know why this little guy is smiling? Why is he so happy? What is this about? Versus, you know, it's great. There are 25 kids with backpacks, but I'm not getting the emotion. So that's really important when thinking about what is the best picture to put into my website content. I will tell you this, though. Don't toss out the other picture. That's a great picture to put up on your social media. Maybe you've got like a whole Facebook um, gallery surrounding the event. It's a great thing to do there. Maybe you're doing an Instagram story and you want a couple of stories to go by. Sure, it's a great opportunity to put it there, but it's not the best opportunity to put that into the content container on your website. So here's another one. I always say I'm not a designer or photographer, nor do I play one on TV. Everybody who's over 40 is smiling and laughing. Everybody who's under 40 is going, I don't know what she's talking about. Um, so I am not a designer, but there are some really great resources out there that can help me if I don't happen to have the budget for a designer. If you've got the budget for it, absolutely. Please pay those people to do what they do well. Pay for that skill set if you have that. But I understand a lot of times you're a do-it-yourselfer. Or if, like me, you used to work at a nonprofit, that meant you did everything. If I had a nickel for every day I didn't do what the job description said at the nonprofit, 
I would be very wealthy because you were always doing a million different things and picking up a lot of different skill sets. And a lot of that came down to, well, we have this project. We don't have a designer. I'm designing my own. So here's some resources for you. Two that I absolutely love that are, are alternatives to Photoshop are Canva.com and PicMonkey.com. Um, also, just letting you know, my slides will be available afterwards, so don't feel like you have to furiously jot all this down. So, what these two websites do, I happen to like Canva a little better, but honestly, you know, your user experience, you may like the other one. Um, what it is, it's a website that comes with a whole bunch of pre-sized templates that cover every kind of social media experience you can imagine. Whether it's an Instagram post, Twitter post, Facebook, uh, page header, Facebook event header, which by the way are not the same size, which is incredibly annoying. Um, every kind of template out there, they have it and they adjust it in real time. So if Facebook goes and changes its header style yet again, they adjust it right away, which is really cool. Um, on this website, um, it has a version of two different things. It's a paid version and a free version. There's tons of functionality on the free version. They have a gallery full of plenty of free photos that you can use to illustrate your posts. You can drag and drop into templates. They give you font suggestions. They give you layout suggestions. It really helps somebody who say, I I'm not a designer. I know that that thing looks good, but I don't know how to create that thing. This lets you drop and drag and create something that you know makes you look pretty good. So for example, the illustration that is just there on the screen I created that in Canva in about one minute. And I'm not, you know, that's not my forte, but I was able to do that in one minute using one of their templates and using their suggestions. And you can really use them for anything, whether it is the hero images we just talked about, social media images, they have some really cool collages that you can make, um, infographics, so many different choices. So here's just a couple of other things just to show you in Canva. Here's a possibility of a hero image. I cooked that one up really quick. That was about 30 seconds worth of work in Canva. Maybe you're a realtor. You could do something like that for, you know, if you're a realtor. Or maybe you have a food blog. All of that is work in Canva, literally, that I managed in about 30 seconds to a minute. The biggest thing that would help that slows me down is, ooh, I like all of these pictures. Which one do I want? That's usually what's slowing me down. Also what's really cool is they have infographics. I love infographics. Just when you save them, make sure they're accessible. You know, don't save them as like a JPEG where nobody can read the text. Provide all the default images or PDFs. You can save it a little bit better with the PDF with some of the wording coming through there. But they have lots of different opportunities to make um, infographics. And again, it's all drop drag. You can um, change colors, you can change fonts. Um, they give the layout for you. I could never design this, but I can sure modify it um, and have it work for me and make my website a little bit better. So I really love it. Here's, um, here's another one for you, other sources. Really, really, really be careful with this, folks. Don't steal images pay for images or get them from a source that gives you, you know, basically free Creative Commons, share and share alike images. And there are a couple of reputable places on the internet where you can do that. Um, my three favorites are listed there, which are Unsplash, Pixabay, and Pexels. There are other sources out there, but those just happen to be three of my favorites. Um, and the photos that are there are photos that were from Unsplash, that happened to be taken by a member of the WordPress community. The man's name is Val Vessa. Just want to give a little shout out to Val. And one of the things that he does as a hobbyist photographer is he will go out and he will upload some of his photos to Unsplash and let other people use that photography. And in fact, that San Francisco Bridge photo is brand new. He was just in San Francisco this week and he tweeted about how it, he had always wanted to shoot the bridge and the conditions were just perfect and he uploaded a bunch of photos and they are free for anyone to use, which is awesome. Um, one thing that I would caution about, I know a lot of times folks will use um, a Google image search 
and they will, you know, hit the tag, you know, free for non-commercial use. I have seen oftentimes those photos come up incorrect. So don't get photos that way. You could really get yourself into trouble. Definitely go <coughs> directly to the source. Be very, very careful. Um, also talk to a person who is working on um, uh, the uh, Wiki Commons project too, or like um, uh, Wikipedia, the website you know that anybody can enter. And they say they do have staff folks that will go in and check and make sure that the images up there are you know Creative Commons share and share alike. But because anybody can edit it, sometimes somebody will put up a photo and you know before somebody double checks it. So don't take the photo from there. Please go directly to a source so that you know for sure you're not accidentally taking something that is somebody else's intellectual property. Um, I have known several people that have gotten themselves into some very serious trouble taking photos that were property of Getty's Getty Images or for real fun and games, don't take something that belongs to the Disney company. <laughs> Trust me, they have lawyers. Okay, um, here are some other sources. Um, sometimes you just can't do it for free. Sometimes it's just, it's just not working despite best efforts. Um, here are three of my favorite sources for affordable photos. The one that I happen to like the best is 123RF, which stands for 123 Royalty Free. Um, I really love their search parameters. They have a number of really affordable payment plans on there. I use them personally every year. I help out a local nonprofit, a local community theater. They don't have a very huge budget, as you can imagine. For under $100 every year, I have been able to create the graphics for about 10 shows. That's pretty amazing. You get a lot of mileage out of the credits that you're able to buy there. Um, they also have a lot of flexibility. You can buy uh, images that are already uh, pre-sized for web. You can get, you know, things that are super-sized. You know, if you want to, I guess, supposedly wrap a building with branding, you probably could buy that size image there. I don't know that that many people want to do that, but you could. Um, they also have uh, now videos that you can get some stock video if you would like that. They have vector art, all kinds of things. And the three graphics that you see there are items that I made from images coming from that source, 123RF. Really good quality stuff. Um, and I love the search parameters are in there because if there is some kind of crazy photo that you want, there it's in there. Just play around, you'd be amazed what has been uploaded, um, uploaded in there. So here's one of my other favorite sources. This is a website called Juxtapose. And as the name might imply, uh, what you get is you get two images which you get to juxtapose. And in the middle there is a little slider, and you can slide it back and forth to see a before and after, which is a really, really cool way of representing different things on your website. Let's say you're trying to represent um, a renovation of some kind. And this is how you know the room started, and then this is how the room finished. Stand yourself in the exact picture, take the shot, and then you get a really cool before after look. Um, I've seen it used um, a number of times by environmental groups when they're trying to show the environmental impact on a site over time. Um, I've seen it a couple times also where there's been a natural disaster and they want to show this is what the city looked like, say, before, unfortunately, a tsunami hit. This is what it looked like after. Really great, super easy just to upload the photos in there. Um, and then it just embeds with an iframe, and there are a variety of ways that you can get that to happen um, on your WordPress website. Here's another one of my favorite resources, is um, something called Mapbox. I don't know if anybody's ever seen Mapbox. It is so cool. I love Mapbox. What it lets you do is it lets you create a map in a variety of stylized ways. Some of them have kind of a cartoon look to it. Some of them have like um, an architect's blueprint look to them. I mean, lots of different looks. Um, and you can put little pins on your map for whatever it is you want to feature. Um, the one that's there is from uh, New York City, and it's featuring some of uh, the different historical neighborhoods in New York City. But really, you can make it do anything you want it to do. Lots of cool, stylized little looks, 
really nice, and again, it just um, embeds into your website. You know, there's a variety, however you want to make it do it. It's, it's essentially an iframe or a link, depending, and you can embed that in a variety of ways in your WordPress website. Um, the next one that I'd like to talk about, too, is Google Maps. Now, we've all seen the basic Google Map, right, where, you know, you just embed it, and okay, this is where my business is located, and people can find me. But there are some other really cool things you can do with Google Maps. And one of them is a custom map where you can tag items in the area that may be relevant to your business, to your event, whatever it is. Um, I stole a screen cap of a map that I created two years ago for WordCamp US in Nashville when it was there. And we were identifying the local coffee shops, uh, restaurants by different variety, co-working spaces, couple different categories in the area with different colored pins. I think you get the choice of about half a dozen different colored pins, so you can do a bunch of different categories, which is really cool. Um, and then people can just interact with the map and figure out how to get to those places that's relevant to what you're doing. Um, and again, super easy to um, embed that, and it's very interactive and functional for the people that are you know, visiting you. Here's something a lot of folks haven't thought about. How many people on your website think about social media as those little icons that are either at the top or at the bottom of the website? And it's kind of there and that's the end of it, right? You have a lot more functionality with that social media that can really perk up your website. Think about it. I always say to people, social media isn't a replacement for your website. It works with your website. It draws you into it, and then it sends you out to another experience. It's, it's a two-fold approach. They work best together. They don't work best apart. They work best in collaboration. Um, and whether that is YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, whatever social media platform happens to work for you, that's another whole conversation. Uh, if you want to join me at the Happy Nurse Bar, I can help you disentangle that later. It's another whole conversation. But those... Those items all work with your website. So here's a way you can do something creatively that maybe you haven't thought about. So talking about that local community theater that I help out again. We had a show last year called A Seussified Christmas Carol. A lot of fun. Ebenezer Scrooge as a Dr. Seuss character. Just, it was hilarious. A, a whole lot of good natured fun for the holidays. So as you can imagine, we shot probably 40 pictures for this, but the one that really kind of sold what was going on was Ebenezer Scrooge and the Cat in the Hat hat. But what about the other pictures? Here's how we did it. Right underneath the very practical information that talked about, you know, here's where you get your tickets, the dates, the time, etc. We embedded our Facebook gallery that had 40 pictures. For one thing, I can upload 40 pictures into Facebook in no time. They're all sized right, they're turned right, um, super, super easy. And they give you the option on any Facebook page, if you look in the little upper right-hand corner of any Facebook um, post, you'll see a tiny little dot, 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 or a down carrot. They keep changing it between the two, so I'm not sure which it is today, to be honest. Um, but one of the options it gives you is to embed that gallery. So now, I'm not only reminding people, hey, I've got a bunch of really cool photos that you can see about this event, but I also have a Facebook page. Maybe you should like me over there, too. And that helps spread the word. It also helps people to spread the word about the photos. It just, it gives you a lot more mileage. I'm also now linking from Facebook to my website. So it's making that interconnectivity a little more obvious for search engines. Yes, this is really the Facebook page that goes with this web site. It's another link. <laughs> Same thing is also true for Twitter. You can do this with Twitter for a number of different things, just bringing up a couple little examples here. Um, one of the things I used to do was write for an entertainment website, and we used to use them all the time. Uh, you can use them for lists of things, like here are the top 10 top 10 reasons to do whatever it is. You can come up with little Twitter embeds in between, kind of highlighting some different things. Um, it's great to give credibility um, to what you're doing. One of my friends was a sports writer and they were writing about the um, World Cup, 
which I guess was um, last year. And one of the games didn't go so well. And he was writing about it, but he thought that what really illustrated the point was Diego Maradona face palming uh, his team <laughs> when they were not doing so well. So he embedded that from Twitter, which was great. It added some additional credibility to his story. It illustrated it. Um, just lots of, um, a lot of time where we were using it um, sometimes was when um, somebody had passed away and we wanted to create a, um, a memorial to the person. We would embed different Twitter reactions to the person having passed. We also did that for congratulations kind of things too as well where we would embed different people's Twitter reactions. So um, it also gave links to those people's content, which was nice, um, and it added credibility to our story. The other one too, which I seem to, which always strikes me as odd, why people link to the YouTube video instead of just put it on your site? Keep them on your website, embed the video. Almost every single video player has an embed option. Sometimes you have to click around a little bit to find it, but it's there. Rather than send people off your site, keep them on your site and embed the video on your site and make sure, again, fill the content container. Sometimes I've seen folks put the little 200 by 200 video, get, get in there and make it stretch. You know, give it 100% width. Make sure it, it fills your container. Here's a couple of other tips for folks. Um, design is also how your words are presented. I know sometimes trying to fight, but sometimes you're not the person who has the choice of what something looks like. I've, I've fought those battles with folks who are like, but I really like this item. So here are some things that have kind of had their day. Marquees. Anybody ever see those across the top of the website? <laughs> you know, please stand by as I slowly give you my news that school is closed today. Um, if you're out, zap the marquees. Their, their day has come and gone. Hit counters. Please don't do those anymore. Please get rid of your hit counters. Um, dated animated GIFs. Um, I remember years ago I had one on a website that um, had resources for a variety of political things and one of them was uh, the Republican elephant and the Democratic donkey and I was very proud that the little elephant raised his trunk and the little donkey kicked his back legs but it's, it's almost like the claymation at this point. Don't be the Gumby of the internet. There are so many more updated gifts. Get those please. Um, get rid of the dark content containers. I know that was like a thing in the early, you know, early aughts. It's not a thing any longer. It's horrible for people for accessibility. I can't read that copy, can you? It's really, really terrible for contrast. Use, use a white content container and darker letters. Um, color sparingly and within your palette. You know, you can do a red bold if something's really critical and you want somebody to pay attention to it, but there shouldn't be like three bajillion different colors going on. Use it sparingly. Um, same thing true with bold and italics. If it's more than, say, like six words, it's too much. It just gets really rough on my eyes to read it sparingly. Like I said, less is more. And then here's a couple things that maybe people haven't thought about. Um, here's some other really cool ways. Just visually, you can make your, your website look great. Think about some beautifully styled H tags. Um, the first copy right there is from WordCamp Philly last year. Just beautifully styled H tags, stylized but yet still readable. Not, not you know, too scripty that it bothers your eyes. Um, bullet pointed lists with some colors in them. Again, add a little flair, add something a little interesting. Um, the cap right below that, shout out to Mel Choice. I don't know if she's sitting in here. She's the one who did this. These are the bullet points for the current WordCamp US site, which is really cool for the numbered lists, which has a really cool number in a block. I really love those. Probably embarrassing Mel if she's in here somewhere. Um, another one that I love is drop case. It looks really cool um, to start off a, a paragraph with the drop case. Um, and it's actually now super easy to do in the Gutenberg editor. Before it required a plugin, now it's like really easy to do in the Gutenberg editor, which is pretty cool. Um, Block quotes, pull quotes with flair. Um, again, just really stylize those quotes. There's lots of opportunity for it. Um, the pull quote is the one in the center. There's lots you can do with that. Um, and those also work out as great kind of breaks up, breakups in texts that just sort of make things interesting. So 
So, a couple of my thoughts on it. Um, thank you for listening. And I probably have like a minute or so before with, with questions. So, if anybody has a question, I'd be happy to answer it. Or if I'm at time, I can answer it later at the happiness bar. So, anybody have a question? Yes, lady right here. Quick question. Previous slide. Presumes I am technical enough to go back. There we go. Where you have the uh, pull quote with the yes. colored background. Um, I thought you said not just colored background, but maybe I misunderstood. Sparingly. You can use it very sparingly. If you're going to use it very sparingly for something like this for a pull quote, and I will say when you see this on the website, the, the cap here isn't great. When you see it on the website, those um, letters are much larger and the contrast is um, much more accessible. But you can use it very sparingly for something like that as a pull quote. You don't want your entire content container reading like that. That would just be way too much. Great question. Yes, lady over there. Um, as a nonprofit person, we are constantly thanking businesses using our logos and linking to them, all that happiness. You, Carousel is what I have some of them in. When I put them on a page, it looks like a hot mess because all the logos are in the size shape. Any suggestions? Um, in fact, I just did a site recently with kind of that for a nonprofit for that very, very thing. We threw it into a gallery instead. Uh, specifically, the site was designed, uh, we were using the new Gutenberg editor, and the Gutenberg gallery feature um, actually did a really nice job on that for one client. Um, and then, secondly, there is another plugin we use for somebody else. If you see me at the happiness bar, I would be very happy to look up for you what plug-in that was that kind of best helped to display logos, because I know sometimes as a nonprofit you're trying to display 20 logos, you want to give everybody their due, I'd be happy to look up that for you later. Sure. Yes, sir. I thought your, your Twitter example was really good, but on the Facebook example, I had the concern that if that Facebook gallery is clickable to go to Facebook, they're never going to convert on your desired conversion and put this button below an $8 ticket. Um, they were already there. My call to action was ahead of that, so it's there. And then also the call to action also repeats on Facebook. So I, I had it in both places. So that's a good. Yeah, no, that's a great question. The call to the the call to action was identical in both places. So hopefully I got them ahead of time. But if not, I got them once they were on there. So I had that call to action. Yeah, no, great question. Yeah, you you well, you know having a duplicate you know, call to action is a great is a great thing to do for sure. Anybody else with a question? Yes. I just don't think people are around enough, to be honest, like the study show, they're just, the attention span of folks is just like, I'm on and then I'm clicking on a menu. Like, they're just not, they're just not there for it. What I think you can kind of do to be a little interesting is take that hero photo and if you want, do like a diagonal across it and maybe you're representing three images with like a diagonal separating, like if you have multiple themes going on. I think there's some very creative things you could do on your layout on that hero image rather than it's sliding to three. Cool. I think I have one last question and then I'm at time. Yes? Instead of uh, embedding like Facebook or whatever, Facebook page, um, would you uh, similarly say like, you know, linking to a page but having it open a new tab, does that work? Or? I mean, you can certainly link to Facebook. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a variety. I mean, I chose to embed it. To, it you know, if you want to link to your Facebook in the middle of your, you know, text describing, sure, that's a that's a opportunity that you could do too. And you know, I'm just saying, like, instead of like, you know, so it won't direct them away from the website if it opens a brand new tab, just keep them on the web Yeah, I mean, it's it, it, you know, however, like I said, however you kind of want to approach it, you can you can do it that way. So. Um, I am out of time, so thank you very much for listening. I uh, just want to say thank you to the organizers and the volunteers. Without them, this wouldn't run. And shout out to my captioner, Amanda, over here, who, um, this is, you know, real-time human captioning, folks. This isn't artificial intelligence. She's doing an awesome job making this talk accessible to many, so thank you for all.